<laughs> hey, 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 everybody, what's up? This is Adam, and I am so stoked to be here with you once again in our 11th part of our e-commerce website building tutorial series. And before we get started here, I just wanted to mention to some of you guys, if you really want to pull on my heartstrings and get to the inner Adam to affect the inner Adam, you can leave me comments like this one. Oh my god, this comment is so great. It embodies and encapsulates it really it makes all my work worth it. All of these 300 and some odd videos are all worth it when I get a comment like this. I mean, all these other comments are awesome and great, don't get me wrong. I enjoy all the feedback. But when somebody says something like this, it just it puts the icing on my cake and it completes my day. I can go to bed a happy man. And I don't care if that's a man or a woman. Either way, it's not about the actual physical act but the statement in itself speaks volumes to me. Okay, when we last left off in part 10, we made good progress in programming the base functionality for the cart, and we even had it roughly displaying some items. But essentially what you want to do is take each item ID and query the database when you have access to that item's ID, and we're going to put a more familiar cart rendering to where we'll have a table here with columns and rows. Each row in the table will be a cart item. And we'll have the item's name, its little thumbnail picture, and all that good juicy stuff that you want for all your cart items. So that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson, is rendering the cart display the way we'd like to have it for our custom needs. OK, here we are inside of cart.php in Dreamweaver. And I'm going to go to Code View. And you can see we have PHP blocks up top. Remember, we put in section 2 and section 3 as we completed the last video. So up here, let's make sure we have a little heading or title for this one that says section 1. Actually, let's just call them all section because we might change the number on those. And this one is if the user attempts to add something to the cart from the product page. Alright, so I'm going to collapse that one. That was the, the first one we built, the first PHP block. Yeah, let's just leave this section 1, section 2, and section 3. If I need to change up those numbers, because I may add another PHP block in there, more programming, and it might be above one of these other sections, so I would have to change my numbers around. But for now, I'm going to leave it section 1, 2, and 3, just like that. I'm going to go and open this code here, that is section 3, render the cart for the user to view on a page. And right here is where we want to have a MySQL query that's going to gather out the product title and various details for each product as it comes through this loop. Okay, so just so everybody understands, I want to make sure that everybody realizes that we have a session cart array that's going to be holding each item's unique ID in the database and the quantity, how many of that item that people have in their cart. So your session, your cart array is holding just IDs, which means that we have to query the database in order to get the product name and other little details about the product that we want. But in your cart array, if you want to keep it smart and streamlined, something that processes a little more quickly, you, all you have to have is the product ID within your cart array. All right, so let's open a file that has the connect to MySQL code in it. Right there. Connect to MySQL database. I'm going to copy that from index.php. I'm going to place it inside of cart.php. Really wherever I want. I'm going to put it right under this script error reporting up top. So right there in that same block, connect to the MySQL database. Let's collapse that block back up. So now we're connected to the database for any need we may have to connect to the database in any part of this script. So if you connect up top, you'll be sure that the connection is open for anywhere you want to use it in this file. Now within this for each loop, it accesses each item that's in the cart array, the multi-dimensional array. So for each associative array, which is each cart item, inside of your cart array, it's going to have an each item variable created for each item in your cart. So really, if you wanted to output this, you could change this code. You can remove this while loop altogether. And right here where it says cart output, 
I'm going to show you how to access the indexes of the array. So the cart output, we're going to have this one. Let's remove that value. Let's take this each item variable. Let's pop it right there. Each item, you put your bracket, single quote, single quote, close the bracket off. And in between there, you want to have item ID. Let's put a dot there to put a little string on the end of it with a break tag. So let's put a little note to ourselves here in the front. Put a set of double quotes, period, so it'll append to that string. Here we're going to type in item ID colon space. And the item ID is going to be right there in that line. Now if you want to access the quantity, all you have to do is type in for this one quantity right there. And that will access the quantity key value. The value of the quantity key. This is accessing the, va the value of the item ID key. So let's change this to say quantity. Now if you run this, you should have a similar display where it's showing each item's ID and the quantity, just like it's doing currently. But we're doing it in a we're using a little different programming to render out the same kind of thing. Now we're going to change this up to make a query to the MySQL database in a second to where you can access the product's name and all the different details for the product. Price, all that good stuff. So you see I FTP that new programming up and it pretty much shows me the same output that it did before but it shows you in the code as the programmer that you can grab each item's ID independently and the quantity for each item within your multi-dimensional array. So within this for each loop, each item that's in your multi-dimensional array, you can access the item ID and the quantity. Right here using this variable. You see that? Quantity, item ID. Now we're going to take this item ID variable within this for each loop and we're going to access the product's name, its price, and all the other details we need for it to render our cart. And also to use those variables when it comes time to send all of the shopping cart's variables to the payment gateway to process the whole transaction. Okay, so knowing that we can access each item's ID through this loop, right above the cart output, where the cart output is getting set to that variable, right under the I++, I'm going to put a new variable in called item ID, and it's going to be equal to each item, item ID. Okay, so you'll have the item ID for each item in your cart array come through this loop. And when it does, it's going to be packed into a, a local PHP variable called item underscore ID. So now we can use that to access the MySQL database for that item. So you type in SQL equals MySQL query. Select all from products where ID equals this item ID limit 1. And you put limit 1 because you only want one result. Now here you can just have a while loop or allow you to access each variable. The price, the product name, and things like that. So inside the while loop parentheses, you put this. Row equals MySQL fetch array and in parentheses you put that SQL query. And now you can go about getting the items. For now I'm going to go ahead and grab just the product name and the product price because those are two things that we don't have available to us just yet and we want to definitely have access to those things. So in the cart output here, just to make sure that we're getting the things we want out of the database, let's put item name, let's put product name right there where that variable is. And then the next line, we want item price. And we're doing this just to make sure everything's working. This is not going to be the final display. All right. So we're successful in getting out the item name and the item price. You can see there's the black hat, black jeans, and black shirt. And if I go home and I put in, say, this purple shirt, there it is. Purple shirt, ID 7, quantity 1, price is 499. Everything in my store happens to be 499. But yours would probably have different prices for everything. I might change my prices up just for some contrast. Okay, so do you see what we're doing here? We're just methodically going through and querying out 
the information, just the information that we need to get for each product. And we have full freedom now to design this. Let's remove this while loop. We have full freedom to design the cart at this point any way we want. So I think I'm going to go into the design view and make some kind of static table that's, that looks the way I want. I'll do it here in design view and then I'll make it dynamic. So we'll pick up in a part 12 where I'll show you how to actually design the way the cart's going to look. In this one we were just simply making sure you guys knew how to access all of the variables that you need for each item.